All right, welcome to the Yorkshire Business Journal. I'm Thea Robinson, and I guess we could just kick it off. So tell us with as little or as much detail as you want, what is the scope and the objectives of Huddersfield Unlimited? Okay, Huddersfield Unlimited is a, is a business-led organization, ostensibly trying to do two things in particular. One, which is to bring uh, new investment into the Huddersfield area, into the town in particular, there's a lot going on. I'm sure I'll say more in a, in a moment about some of those things. But uh, Huddersfield needs uh, more profile. And the second element is to help raise that profile of Huddersfield with people who might be interested. So uh, the organisation was founded by our chairman, uh, Sir John Harmon, uh, about five years ago. Uh, we are, in essence, becoming a voice, have become a voice for businesses in the area, working with the statutory bodies like Hercules Council, etc., but trying to help draw those investments, which hopefully bring new, higher, better paid jobs for the residents of Huddersfield, but also bring some prosperity into the town and the area and take advantage of some of the many and unique features that Huddersfield happens to have. OK, so how successful has the mission of promoting investment in Huddersfield been so far? Well, we, we held a conference last autumn, um, some details of which are on our website. And with a little bit of promotion for that, it's simply huddersfieldunlimited.co.uk. So you can find more of those details on there, anybody that's interested. Um, the, the purpose of the conference, as much as anything, was to highlight, and we, we created a document for it. I know I'm holding something up, which won't come through very well on the camera. But in essence, it's, it's our Huddersfield, our future. It's our vision for the town. And it highlighted in particular that just at this moment, there's over a billion pounds of investment going into Huddersfield primarily through three particular sources. One of them uh, is the upgrade of the Trans-Pennine rail link. Huddersfield sits geographically right in the centre between Manchester and Leeds, and indeed in the centre of the triangle, really, between Manchester, Leeds and Sheffield. Uh, we are pretty well placed in the hills to be in the centre of the Northern Powerhouse, or whichever phrase is the current fashionable one for all the things that go on up here in the north. A little bit, as Andrea was saying earlier, the north and Yorkshire are often missed off the main press down in London in terms of the things that go on and how uh, much opportunity there is up here. Uh, the second one is that the university in Huddersfield uh, is investing in a new campus on a site just adjacent to the town centre with a push towards health and well-being. One of those themes that perhaps has been downplayed over recent years, but is becoming more and more common as people look towards the welfare of the people working inside organizations or just of the population generally so there's a lot of opportunities around that campus and they're already uh, digging or have dug the ground to start building building number one there's a, a plan to have seven buildings there and i know they're already looking at what the third building uh, will actually encompass and who will be involved with that and then on top of that kirkley's council themselves and kirkley's council clearly have a brief that's wider than just huddersfield so they actually appreciate it as being around and having the opportunity to highlight Huddersfield uh, in the whole of Kirklees. Uh, they're investing in the town centre. There's a creation of what is referred to as the cultural heart, which is a new uh, area where people can go for entertainments. So there'll be a new entertainments venue there. The library and arts gallery are being revamped, uh, a green space, uh, and generally moving, helping move around some of the shops, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and tidy up some of the areas into the town centre where, where the shops are to try and encourage what's going on they also have initiatives in what's called the station to stadium corridor which is the area for those that are familiar with Huddersfield that uh, as you come out of the station you're effectively looking down that corridor towards the station uh, towards the stadium big pardon uh, and the um, nature of uh, that area is a little bit downplayed and old-fashioned in most areas and, and there's some land there that needs to be appropriately used for businesses that are looking for some of Huddersfield's strengths, which might be advanced manufacturing, the ongoing uh, world-leading textiles knowledge that there is in the area, or possibly against some of the new digital things that are around, triggered by the university and the very good broadband connections, but also the university campus on this health and well-being side, and much more. There's a lot more than those things going on. So those three together come to a billion pounds, but there's a lot of other initiatives um, triggered by that. There's some development in an existing shopping centre to, to enhance the area with a, a cinema and a bowling alley and such things. There's a, 
a, a nine story building next to the campus that I've been referring to that stood empty for many years, a former tax office that now has a new owner and desire to turn it into accommodation for students, high quality accommodation for students. Uh, there's a new supermarket being developed in, in the grounds of what was an old um, teaching college on the other side of the town centre and so on. So adding together all of these and, and some other ones, again, please go and have a look at uh, our website if anybody wants to see more details or get in touch with us directly. Uh, these are all things that are happening. And what we want to try and encourage is to try and get people aware of Huddersfield and what's happening in Huddersfield. Now is the time to come and look at Huddersfield if you're considering somewhere in the north. Le Leeds and Manchester have their own attributes, clearly, but Huddersfield shouldn't be ignored. It's typically a little lower cost to do the things that people might want to achieve. Uh, and the communications are, are excellent, as well as the, the the lifestyle that people can have living here, nestling in amongst the hills with the green spaces and and many other aspects that are that are around. So there's lots going on. And and if I may, just just to add one thing onto the end of that, there's a uh, a national, if not international, conference taking place in Leeds next month on 16th to the 18th of May, which is for property investors and developers. And we are actually holding with our partners at Kirklees Council a showcase for Huddersfield as a fringe event uh, at the end of that. So it'll be an opportunity to put many of these things I'm describing in the last few minutes um, in front of people who might be interested in taking them further, expanding their businesses, looking for a new office or where to set up a business or, or something of that nature. So we want to try and encourage more of that. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for the town and for us and for our partners to, to in, invite people there to hopefully get the best out of it. It sounds like a lot of the investment is kind of reached through partnership with a lot of local businesses and the local community. So could you tell me if Huddersfield Unlimited has hosted outreach programs for members of the Huddersfield community to collaborate with not only you, but other businesses in the area? Absolutely, yes. The, the conference I mentioned was a very visible one. We invited people from many different areas uh, around uh, representing many different parts of the town and different activities within the town and wider. Uh, Tracy Brabin, the mayor of West Yorkshire attended and, and did some closing words, for example, representing an even wider area, although she is a resident of Huddersfield. She lives out in uh, Slough on the edge of Huddersfield. Um, so, yes, and we have working groups within Huddersfield Unlimited that uh, incorporate a number of local notable individuals, typically business people, but some of them are members of the local community in other capacities as well, representing some of the societies and the residents associations and such things. So. We try and draw all these people together, ask them for opinions. We we did a, a Create Streets survey last summer to try and get some insight as to what people saw as particular problems with road areas or the, or the communications. There's a, there's a push in there for active travel to try and replace cars and such things, particularly with the railway upgrade. So what can we try and do to try and solicit uh, opinions out of the public and then share that with bodies like Kirklees Council so that they're as well as their own activities, they're getting a different view and a different viewpoint. So we, we will do all we can. There's always intended to be more of those things going on. We're a very small organisation. Uh, we have two part-time employees, so it's not like we're particularly trying to promote ourselves. It is all about those collaborations and trying to get other organisations to take part, um, share their own knowledge or their own activities in some way and see if we can uh, we can build that bigger picture and present that bigger picture to a, a wider audience. Okay, so when it came to, when it comes to your website, of course, that was my first place to go when it came to researching you guys. Um, and you mentioned that you not only host stories about the progress, but also you host like a platform for people to kind of inquire more about how to invest at the Huddersfield. So could you tell me, are you guys more of a local news outlet or are you more of a business outreach program or a combination of the two? We're probably quite unique, to be honest. There's there's no attempt to try and be a news outlet. We we have our own social media themes, and we do various bits of PR as well as what people can see on on our website itself. Uh, we've created this hashtag Our Huddersfield, which we and a number of partners in the Huddersfield area, the council, the university, Huddersfield Bid, and Huddersfield Live are all using and sharing uh, when we can for co promotions of of particular activities or news items. The main press seems to only ever have a bad opinion of Huddersfield with the various things that have gone on, uh, and I'll not highlight them here, but we want to highlight the positives. There are always good things happening. There are, there are many opportunities. Um, there's a festival of music going on in Huddersfield at this moment, which I noticed a little bit on the television news recently. Um, hopefully, you know, that will kind of put 
more positive spin on what can happen in Huddersfield and does happen in Huddersfield so that people will see it. So we share other people's news, um, create a, a small amount ourselves clearly, uh, but um, it, it's more about sharing and, and trying to get that positive message out from there. And in a in a parallel sense, yes, we are intending trying to collate what the most suitable forum is for businesses in the area to talk amongst themselves, to to highlight where there might be some deficiency or something that's not working at the best that it could do for businesses and hence not encouraging new businesses to come to the area and then see if we can lobby or persuade the people that might be able to influence and change that to try and make those things happen. Kirklees have recently uh, recreated, if you like, Business Kirklees, which is a, a forum, a small part of their forum that works closely with us to try and help particular businesses in certain circumstances we have a more open brief so we're trying to help lots of things in lots of different ways but uh, lots of businesses are in lots of lots of different types of business in lots of different ways business Kirklees is in many ways uh, a current portal that people can go to and, and find out a certain amount of information which might be about grants that are available or locations that they might be able to look at for a new office or, or something of that nature okay so you mentioned that Huddersfield kind of lies in the middle of a triangle of business business cities. I wanted to know, because I saw at your Huddersfield hub that it had the least impact of the cost of living crisis. And it has a little over a 1% rise in economic activity over the past year. So how would this assist in promoting investment in the area? Well, all, all businesses need people to work in them. I mean, there's, there's, there's perhaps an odd exception to that, but it needs a workforce that is capable and well-educated. Um, Huddersfield historically it was a wealthy town back in Victorian days on the back of the, uh, the you know the, the money that came through particularly the wool trade etc and the businesses that are associated with that engineering and chemicals um, so there's a history of being at the forefront of technology and moving things forward and indeed the university today uh, under the stewardship of Vice Chancellor Bob Cryan is, is very good at looking for opportunities where um, education of work of the workforce is key but there are also some very good further education colleges in the town um i think i read something recently where one of them is now in the top 10 nationally for teaching apprentices so for businesses looking to have the right skilled workforce and it comes from a base perhaps where huddersfield has lacked investment and has declined so you know least impact of rising cost of living if you're starting from a low base it can't really get any lower. It needs to grow. It needs all those initiatives and all that help to, to drive it up there. Um, we're very good at whinging in West Yorkshire about things that aren't quite right. We're not very good at talking up what can happen, how things can move forward. So as circumstances improve and as some of these new opportunities manifest themselves in the town, then really there should be growth. There should be a early um, visible signs of growth for whichever organisations are getting involved and hence for the individuals within there, the residents ultimately. Some may commute into the town or commute out of the town, but um, those that are here and working in the business and, and, and the opportunities that are around here hopefully will see that grow, see that grow quickly um, and add to that prosperity. So, you know, fingers crossed, there's, there's a bit of hope with all of these things, but if you don't actually push and share what the opportunities and successes are, then uh, nothing will happen. All right. So what role can businesses play within your organization? Well, we, we we want to talk to them, I suppose, is the key thing. If businesses, and we were having a meeting with some business leaders a few days ago, but we, we want to know what they're trying to do. So, you know, what are those businesses? I'll, I'll not name names because it, it wouldn't be appropriate on, on, on something like this, but they're, they're looking, they've got various sites and they're looking for a way of moving away from one of their sites, a very old site. So it's a bit constrained for getting materials in and out and for people getting to it. They don't really want to move out of the area, but they need bigger premises. And Huddersfield has a limited amount of flat land for things to move on and a limited amount of particular resources if the, if a particular resource is wanted to do with effluent or water supply or power supplies and such things. So we have to try and make sure that their needs are highlighted and they can be built into the bigger picture that the council uh, in their more general sense, have to think about these things. But it can be very successful. Somebody, a, a different business owner that I was talking to was looking to expand his business and, and may get very close to a 1,000 employees in the near future, having only started the business a relatively small number of years ago. He's doing a fantastic job. 
but he needs bigger premises and he didn't want to move very far. He lives in the town. He was born and brought up in the town. His workforce are in the town and he looks like he's found an opportunity to move to a piece of brownfield land. Um, we all seem very happy that what he's proposing to build actually is not uh, out, out of character for the area where it will be and therefore fingers crossed the permissions will be given and he can he can make that move so there's you know one organization looking to do things by and highlighting to us their needs so we can share that with our associates and the people that we work with and, and try and help them move it's, it's not something they're looking for for tomorrow but they, but they want something within the next couple of years sort of thing and the other one is a more urgent one but it looks like it's progressing so to some extent just talking with people sharing um, some of the knowledge of the people within and around Huddersfield and Limited in, in slightly different ways at least means people can talk. And if people are talking, then hopefully they can find a positive outcome that, that helps all parties in some way. All right. So if I were a business, walk me through the process of becoming a member of Huddersfield and Limited. Well, we're not a membership organization, so we're not actually advocating members we, we we want people to follow us we want people to talk to us and in some cases we, we have people who help fund us so for those organizations that are able to provide us with some funding that that's fantastic it means we can do a bit more um but we just want people to to come forward so they, they, the media streams are useful because we can see the people that are following those streams and obviously interact with them uh, but for all the businesses in, in the immediate vicinity that, that might know something about Huddersfield, come forward. There's a, there's a contacts page on our website. Um, we will be visible at certain events at certain times to try and help draw people in. And we will reach out to the organisations that we're aware of through news articles or other activities that, that we think might be uh, interested. The challenge, in, in a way, is those that are outside of the area and actually managing to get some visibility in front of them so events like UK Reef that I mentioned earlier is an opportunity that our name and the opportunities within Huddersfield will will make a wide you know a much wider audience people on a, at least a national if not an international level will be looking and hopefully some of those will share with us on on that evening at the fringe event um what they would like to do and we can we can sort of I don't know hold their hands is the wrong phrase but be a buddy be a, be someone that can sort of help Put them in touch with the right people to talk to perhaps others that have gone through a similar journey or those they need to talk to to actually look at acquiring a piece of land or, or moving into a building with a, a certain amount of grant funding in some way so yes our website is the is the, is the main portal and, and the various social media feeds lead to that as well so th through there is probably the easiest thing to do we're not we're not very large to be honest uh, and and therefore, you know, we, we're not, we not don't have a shop front as such other than the website, but hopefully people will come to us and, and find that. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming to this interview today. The answers were very informative and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Ruitha. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you.